Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're going to look at expression controllers. Now sometimes people get confused about expressions and expression controllers and they think it's very complicated and hard to use but in actual fact expression controllers are extremely helpful and very easy to use controllers that stop us rifling around down here in the layer panel by bringing all the controls up to the effects controls panel in one place where we know what they are and they're easy to control. Now expression controllers can be applied in this case to the layer that you're working on but more common particularly when you've got multiple layers and multiple parameters in different layers that you're using together you would create another layer, a null object and actually use that as your controller layer and you put the control for all the different layers that you're controlling you put all the controls onto one layer, link them all up and you're going very very quickly. Now at this particular tutorial I'm not going to create the controller layer because I'm actually working in one layer because this is a shape layer project okay, and you can see I've got a whole bunch of shapes that I've created to create this man. So I've got my man here and I've got all my shapes to create the man and what I'm going to do is group them. So I'm going to select the top item, shift click to select the bottom item and control G or command G to group. Alternatively you would have selected group from the top layer and created a new group and drag them in but I'm just going to select them all and do control G and there is the man and if I open him up there's the group and open up the transform so you can see that at the moment if I click on transform group I've got his anchor point right in the middle of him which is pretty much where I want it to be I might just want to shift a little bit further up so I'm just going to take my pan behind tool and shift that anchor point up a little bit more into the center of the man there Okay, that's perfect so that when I actually do a rotation of the group here's the rotation I can rotate him from the middle okay might want to do that a bit later on so I'm going to right click to reset that so I've now got this man and I want to say have him repeat across screen and down screen as I've done in another one so I'm going to go through this very quickly because I've done this before on another tutorial just going to go repeater that repeats him across the screen and I wanted to go down the screen so I'm going to select the man at the top repeater this is my second repeater, repeater 2 which is repeating down I'm going to open up repeater 2 I'm going to open up its transforms I'm going to take X to 0 and Y I'm just going to drag out to it and see roughly where it should be which is about there okay so that's all set up I've got my repeater across and my repeater down and I've got my group and all the bits and pieces that I might want to do. Now the sort of thing I might want to do is rotate the men, have them move across screen, have them move down screen and I have to go in and out of my various repeaters and in and out of my various groups and even my layer transforms if I want to to get to all those bits and pieces and if I want to make continuous changes to things it's actually very difficult to do because I'm forever going backwards and forwards so what I'm going to do is use expression controllers to set it all up so that when I click on this layer all the effects to do all these changes will actually already be here as little sliders and angle controls and color controls all the way up here so how do we do this well you can select the layer and then you're going to add effects and there is actually a category if I go to effects called expression controls and these are the various expression controls all of them apart from layer control are actually animatable and I'm going to choose for instance to start off with an angle control so there's an angle control I'm going to select angle control and hit enter and call it man rotate so that's the man rotate and I know that the rotate for the man is in group 1 so I'm going to open up group 1 and it's in the transforms for the whole group so I'm going to open up the transforms for the whole group and let's just double check that's the rotation there yep that's the rotation so I'm going to right click to reset it and now I need to create an expression now to create an expression is actually very simple you just hold the alt key on a PC the option key on a Mac and hold it down and click on the stopwatch and you get this text come up and you get all these different bits and pieces here in the timeline this is saying that the expression is enabled this allows you to show it in a graph editor and this little one here is for linking so rather than me having to actually type anything because I might not know my JavaScript all I need to do is click on this pick whip click and drag and drag all the way up to where it says angle and when I let go the text is typed in 
and then I hit enter on my number pad or I just click away and as long as I don't get any messages coming up saying I've made a mistake the expression has been created and now notice that the text down here is red telling me that it is controlled by something else and that something else is our man rotation up here in which I can click and drag and I can rotate the man and actually control how he looks and I can reset that so at the moment I've done the man rotation now let's have a little think about creating the opportunity to scale him across screen and then down screen and there's two things we need to think about we need to think about how many copies going across and down and also the distance between the items so let's do man distance and then man copies and to do that I'm going to use another expression controller so I'm going to go to effect expression controls and slider which is actually the one I probably use most of all and I'm going to name this first one hence enter and call it across okay so across so that's going to tell me how far across it is and then I'm just going to actually duplicate it because it's not linked up yet so I'm just going to duplicate it and when it says across to I'm going to put across number okay so we're going to now link these up so we're going to have one that's going to set the position between them and the other one that's going to set the number now the easier one is actually the number because if I look at it it's actually my repeater one because we're thinking about going across here so repeater one this is the number of copies and we're going to do number across so I'm going to alt click option click on that number of copies take the pick whip again and drag it up to the one that says across number of that little slider there now they'll all disappear at the moment because if you notice the slider is at zero so if I do that and hit enter on my number pad they all disappear because there's none but if I start to pull them across you'll see that we can go up to whatever number we want to go to okay so that's one thing however the other one is what's the distance between them and the reason that this is more complicated if I open up the transforms for this first repeater which is the one that goes across open up the transforms you'll see that there's two properties for position X which is the one we want to control and Y which we don't want to change from zero because that would move things down so if I actually move this Y you'll see that we start getting these sloping effects well you can do that if you want to but that's not actually what we're aiming to do in this particular one so I'm just going to control Z to undo that so I'm only interested in animating the one thing and that's what this across slide is about so this is how we do it again I'm going to alt click on position and I'm going to then do something which is called create an array and that means I'm going to separate what happens to X and Y and to separate them out into two separate things you have to do an open square bracket so open square bracket saying that I'm going to separate the first dimension from the second dimension and then I can add this pick whip to decide which dimension does what so simply take that pick whip up to the across slider so this slider under the word across and let go it types it all in for me now this is important comma separate the dimensions with a comma okay so at the moment I said open square bracket X must be controlled by this slider however Y I want to stay as is I don't want it to be changed in any other way I want it just to stay as it is how do I control that I take the pick whip and I actually drag it up to the Y value the second value and when I'm over the Y value and I let go it types in the default transform position and then I hit the square brackets to close off my array so square brackets saying I'm splitting up X and Y and then for X I've dragged the pick whip up to the slider to control it and then Y by comma so I finish with that I'm going to do Y say let whatever Y is be whatever it is then hit the square bracket and then I hit enter on my number pad and now you'll see that the slider is at zero or even though there are 13 copies but when I start to pull this slider across and by the way you can't open up a slider and literally slide you'll see that we begin to control how far apart each copy is and even though it finishes at 100 if you hover over 100 you can pull them out even more and if you need to increase the range you actually want this slider to say more than 100 if you right click on this yellow text here where it says slider you see that you've got edit value 
when you go to edit value you can actually say what the slider range is going to be so it's going to go from 0 to what? well let's say 250 for argument's sake or say 200 maybe and then when I click OK you'll see that now the slider is saying 200 so I can go all the way from 0 to 200 if I want to really stretch those men out so just because you've got a default value here up to 100 doesn't mean you can change it. For instance, I'm not going to want to go beyond 20 copies, say, of a cross. So I can right click on where it says 13 edit value and take where it says 100 to 20 at the most. And therefore you see the slider then goes, if I open this slider up, goes from 0 to 20 at the most across. Okay, and now that I've done that, I can control the men rotating. And I can have all of the men showing and I can decide how far apart they're going to be. Now I can then go on for example and do down. So let's just do down just to show you how it would do again. So this is going to bring a repeater to we want how many are going to go down and then how far down are they going to go. So let's do a couple more sliders. So I'm going to go effect and the last thing that you've done is always at the top. So I'm going to get one slider control and just duplicate it control D uh, so that we've got two unused at the moment. So I'm going to Select the first one I'm going to put down. OK, I can put position if it helps. So we know how far down it's going to be. And the second one I'm going to put down number. OK, you might want to choose better titles than these. And then we can go to repeater 2, which is the one that's dealing with down. And we know that copies is going to be the down number. So we all click on copies, take the pick whip, take it to the down slider numbers, enter on the number pad and that's gone back to zero because that's what it's at at the moment do we want it to go up to 100? I doubt it so again we can right click in here, edit value take it to 7 at the most okay so 7 is the most that we're going to have oops I added the value I should have done the should have done this 2 value at 7 so there we go so I've got 7 at the most going down so that's the down number what about the down position this is the down position one here and remember we're going to look at the repeater transforms and it's the position, it's the second value we want to affect this time. So again, we do need to alt click, and then we need to use that square, open square bracket to say we're going to be putting in an array, separating x from y. And this time we want x to stay as x. So we take the pick whip and drag it up to the first value, the x value, and say stay as you are, comma, separating them out. So I finished with x. Y, however, the second value, done the comma, so now we're going to be dealing with y, we take up to that down position and let go and then close square brackets enter on the number pad and now when we open up this second slider we aren't going to want to go up to 100 again but we can start to pull it down or maybe we are 100 is not enough in fact so let's right click this one edit value and say take it to 250 and now you'll see that goes up to 250 and we can start pulling all the way up to 250 to separate those men out Okay, so we've gone into all kinds of different values for this man. And we can see how many versions we've got of whatever we've got. So uh, we're even fading in and out because you can see this particular one is working at points. Okay, so we've set all that up. So fade things in and out and whatever we want to do. What we might want to do now is think about adding some expression controllers for color and or layer and I'm going to show how to do the color ones and the layer ones in the next tutorial which follows on from this one. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.